Hi, it's Pastor Smith again, back for our Meet the Teacher interviews. I guess it's, I don't, we don't even have a title for them, but that's what we're doing is we're meeting the teachers. Uh, we're a little behind. Uh, Brenda was supposed to be like two weeks ago, and she's just coming up today. We had a short week and COVID stuff interfered, so here we are uh, with Mrs. Richardson. Uh, Mrs. Richardson, you've been with us now just over a year. So yeah. um, I know a bit about you, but a lot of the people watching don't. Could you tell us a little something about yourself? Sure. Um, I grew up on a dairy farm in the thumb of Michigan, and that shaped a lot mm -hmm. of my life. And a lot of the things that I love about nature and science come from spending lots of hours mm -hmm. sitting on a fence watching the cows <laughs> <laughs> or, or kind of having free reign of a lot mm -hmm. of property mm -hmm. and being allowed to explore sure. as a kid. Now, which town were you near? Uh, Port Hope. Port Hope? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, my, my mother grew up on a farm. And yeah. so I, when I was little, my grandfather was still alive, and I have good memories of farms. But yeah. what I remember, no more cows. He was past you know, that. You know what was very interesting? Port Hope was a small town of mm -hmm. about 300 people. And when I first got the call to St. Luke, the first day that I went there, I um, met a pastor who was a retired pastor there, and his name was Pastor Hines. And I said, you know, when I was a child, the first pastor that I remember was Pastor Hines. It was the, the same, same guy. One, pastor Clancy? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And so that was very neat that I got to know him as an adult. Mm -hmm. And he was the first pastor that I remember having an influence on me as a child. Isn't that fun? Yeah. You have that? Yeah. yeah. I have that from my, grand, my grandmother's church where my mom grew up as well. Yeah. Um, since you brought up St. Luke, what other Lutheran schools have you served at? Um, the first Lutheran school that I was at was Our Savior in Marlette. Um, and sadly, they were they were a new school that when I first went there, they had never graduated an eighth grade class. Okay. They kept adding new classes on every year. Mm -hmm. And a couple years ago, they closed. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I was at St. Luke in Clinton Township. And unfortunately, a couple years ago, they closed. Well, we're not planning on that <laughs> this time, Brenda. So. Well, I, I have a little history of that. I did start teaching in the public school first. Okay. And um, unfortunately, the school that I taught at closed. Well, I think so. <laughs> we know how we're going to end this interview right now, guys. <laughs> so that's that's not how the story ends. Okay. You know, I thought I thought at the beginning of my career, most of the teachers that I knew had one teaching position, and they had been in that teaching position from their first year until they retired. And I really thought that that was how it was going to go for me, mm -hmm. and it didn't. No, uh, it's amazing how that works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. Uh, as a pastor, I know some of my conceptions about some of that have changed because they have had to. Yeah. So what led you to be a, a, a teacher and then come into the Lutheran schools? Yeah, um, I think God had to work on me a little slowly. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't one of those people that always knew I wanted to teach. Oh, um, my high school teachers kept telling me I should be a teacher. And when you're in high school, the last thing you want to do is stay in school longer. Mm -hmm. But when I got to college and my freshman year, I was going to be a psychology major, and all of my professors kept saying, have you looked into education? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, the listened. Lord has a way of making us rethink our plans, doesn't it? Yeah. So I looked at it, and I'm like, yeah, this is everything I love about psychology. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I started teaching in the public school, and including a one-room schoolhouse. Okay. And then going back to serve in Port Hope at the public school in the, the community that raised me was very influential but when they were getting close to closing um i actually started teaching graduate classes okay because i got laid off in the middle of a school year and oh you my. don't find a teaching job no. in the middle of the school year but i had a master's degree myself and i was qualified to teach graduate classes so for a year and a half i taught graduate classes and then slid into a teaching position at our savior in marlette and then got my colloquy mm -hmm. and um have been happily in the Lutheran school system since. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you're with us, too. <laughs> it, it, no, I am. It, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, one of the things, obviously, you, you believe learning is important. Yeah. Okay? yeah. Uh, what I want to know is tell me about how do you learn and how are you growing as a teacher, uh, not just as a teacher, but just as an individual. What are you doing and how do you make sure you're still growing and learning? Um, that's really interesting. My ideas about learning have changed a lot over the years. I used to think most students were visual, and I thought myself to be visual too. 
and I realized, if you don't know me, I talk a lot. <laughs> I come from a family of six kids, and I'm the youngest, and believe it or not, I'm the quietest one in my family, because if you don't talk, you don't, um, you don't get heard. You should meet my family. <laughs> So, <laughs> but I, but I found out that the reason is is I'm really heavily auditory. Mm -hmm. I have to hear myself say it, and I see that more and more in my students too. And so I don't talk to myself. I'm not one of those people. Mm -hmm. But I do want to talk to other people and hear myself say something. I don't need someone else to solve the problems for me. Okay. And I've had a lot of life changes um, in the last five years, and so. I'm exploring new hobbies and new things, and I'm open to new to new ex, you know new mm -hmm. things to do. Mm -hmm. And so, if so, I, axe throwing is one I want to try, you know, I haven't found and the same thing. As I long have as a, you're not mad at me, it sounds like a great <laughs> idea. So I have a kayak too. My daughter and I both have kayaks, and um, I had a friend that we went kayaking a lot a couple years ago. This last summer, I didn't find somebody that wanted to do that. So if anybody's into kayaking and you have a truck because my new car, <laughs> I do not have the rails put uh, on it to transport them, but um, I would love to find somebody to go kayaking with. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a, a lot of fun. Uh, I've never kayaked. We canoe. Okay. Uh, we were going to try kayaking in one of our vacations, and I said, no, I am not starting kayaking in Lake Michigan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lake Michigan has got a lot of tides and stuff in yeah. it. Yeah. And so I said, no way. And Rivers are better. And in, inland lakes are even better yet, um, but I have had to get rescued from an inland lake at Stony Creek once. <laughs> Someone I was with dumped us in the water, and once the once it fills up with water, there's nothing you can do out in the middle of the no, lake. No. So had to get rescued. Oh, that's part of the fun. <laughs> uh, I'm going to end this. Is that sure. okay? Sure. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in again. It, it was fun. I got to learn some stuff about Mrs. Richardson, and we're glad she's with us, and yeah. we look forward to uh, more time with you as you help us, our kids grow, and us all grow together. Yeah, so thanks. thank you, Mrs. Richardson, for coming.